now is Therese Coffey. She's the MP for Suffolk Coastal. Morning to you, Therese. Good morning, Lizzie. So, so your reaction, I mean, do you feel safer? That's the first question I'm asking today. I feel that we are contributing now to efforts to really strike at ISIL, uh, Daesh, whether, whether they are in Iraq or Syria. I think that's for the benefit of the United Kingdom, but it's certainly for the benefit in those co of people in those countries too. Was it a tough decision for you? Um, I have to say, I don't think it was a tough decision for me. We've been um, undertaking this process in Iraq in the last year, and for me it was a logical consequence to go into Syria as well. It's obviously a really important, uh, a historical decision as well. I mean, do you feel the weight of that? Yes, it is uh, one of the most serious things that a member of parliament will have to do. Um, it's not the first time that's happened to me. Uh, I guess we've had three or four votes now on military action. Uh, it's a sign of the times we're in. Um, we also make other difficult decisions on a daily basis, whether that's about spending or whether something people have done legally one day, they're a criminal the next for doing the same thing. So uh, we have to make these judgments. But um, it is uh, the critical time for the House of Commons when it chooses to deploy um, our surface, uh, service uh, men and women into, uh, into action abroad. What, what was the mood like in the House of Commons last night? Well, um, I think what was most telling when the actual final result came through was complete silence. Um, unlike uh, a couple of years ago when there was jeering or cheering when the, the government lost its vote uh, not to go into Syria on the first uh, occasion uh, the Prime Minister asked. So um, very much a heavy uh, uh, hand of history uh, today extending this military action. But I think there were some very powerful speeches on both sides. Margaret Beckett and Hilary Benn stand out for me um, on Labour. So... Uh, uh, but nevertheless, people felt they were doing the right thing on both, whether they voted for or against. Um, but uh, people should be able to hold their head up high um, rather than being accused of one thing or the other. That, that, that's difficult, isn't it? Because there have been things being said for those who haven't supported this. And, and I heard this morning talk of, of bullying and so on. Well, there's been considerable attempts, I think, to intimidate on social media. I suppose I'm a little bit more experienced, so I don't worry about these things. Um, there was one MP in London who had a demonstration outside her house, which uh, I'm sure is quite intimidating. Um, I've got now colleagues who are receiving what they perceive could be death threats or intimidation threats. Um, but that's the role we undertake. And um, it's unpleasant when people do these things. There's no excuse for it. But we have to be resolute. You, ha you haven't had threats yourself? No, I just get accused of all sorts of different things, but that's fine. Um, people will vent and be angry. I'm perfectly happy with the vote that I did last night, and I would do it again. You, you heard, I think, uh, Colonel Richard Kemp, former commander of British forces in Afghanistan, saying we must have a full package of me measures. Grand forces must happen. Is that the next step, do you think? Well, the Prime Minister yesterday and last week explained why he didn't think it was necessary for British ground forces to go in. Um, he does believe that the solution has to lie within the Middle East. We have this difficult situation where, where we, we are now united with Russia in attacking ISIS Daesh to try and de um, uh, eradicate that form of extremism. Nevertheless, President Assad in Syria is still, it's his regime that is the principal cause of many people being killed and the whole refugee crisis that he's created. Now, the Vienna talks are an absolutely vital part of tr this strategy in order to get peace in Syria and Iraq. Um, it is crucial that we now have Russia, Iran at those talks as well, recognizing the need, I believe, for a peaceful transition, ultimately. But um, as was articulated very well yesterday, just like happened in World War II, um, we have to go and defeat this extremism um, and bring about peace uh, in, in due course. Of course, our humanitarian efforts will still be uh, running in parallel with the largest donor in Europe, second largest donor in the world, and it matters that we continue to help those people who are suffering. Thank you ever such a lot for taking the time. I know you've got to dash off now yes, as well. Thank but you very much. Therese Coffey, much appreciated. And in fact, we'll get